good evening and welcome. Tonight we'll be going over the history and geography of Panama. Panama is a really fascinating country and vitally important to the world. It borders Costa Rica over here and it borders Colombia-ish over here. I say ish because this area is known as the Darien Gap, um, mostly this region. It is, for the most part, uncharted, thick rainforest, impenetrable and all those things. It bleeds into Colombia, so a lot of it just hasn't even been explored because it's just so thick. So there's, there's a border here, technically, but the border is the Darien Gap. It's known as the Darien Gap mainly because of this highway you can see going through Panama. This is the Pan American Highway. It goes all the way from Fairbanks, Alaska down to um, Tierra del Fuego in South America, crosses all of the American continents. But it has to stop here because of the jungle. You have to somehow get a boat, go around into Colombia somewhere can't drive through it. It's very thick, thick, thick rainforest. Anyway, the most important aspect of Panama is definitely the Panama Canal, which goes right through here. Of course, we're going to talk about it in its history, but it cuts across the isthmus here, starting here in the city of Colón and ending in the capital city, Panama City. There was a dam created from the river over here, which you can't see on this map, uh, but the, the lake that was created by the dam is right here. This is Lake Gatun. It's the largest lake in Panama. And ships sail in. You can see the canal over here. Sail in. They use these locks to elevate the ships up and then back down to sea level down here. And this is so important because it's the fastest way to get from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. You can see right here is the Caribbean Sea. And you can't see any Pacific Ocean sign over here, but this is the Pacific Ocean. Down here along the coast are quite a few islands. The biggest one being Coiba, right here, in the Gulf of Chiriqui. There's also a lot of islands here. They're known as the Pearl Islands in the Gulf of Panama, the largest being Isla del Rey. And then along the Caribbean, there's a lot more islands. Panama has like over a thousand islands. There are a lot up here in this area. They are known as the Bocas del Toro. And then along the coast here are many, many islands known as the San Blas Islands. And they are, oh, what's the word? They're self-administered. Um, they are populated by the Guna ethnic group. I, didn't have time to mention in my notes, but they essentially rebelled and demanded their own state. So they're allowed to have the islands. It's, it's autonomous. That's what I'm looking for. They have autonomous control of the islands up here. There are actually quite a few autonomous-ish areas of Panama. They're known as Comarcas. There's one over here. And then, of course, in Darien, there's one there for the indigenous peoples that live in those areas. They get to govern themselves. There are also lots of mountains all throughout Panama, kind of going down its spine here. These are the Talamanca island, or islands, mountains, coming from Costa Rica down into Panama. And then we have the San Blas islands. Uh, islands, I said it again. The San Blas mountains over here. These are the San Blas islands. These are the San Blas mountains. And then there's the Darien Mountains, and there's mountains down here on the Zero Peninsula, you can see. There's also a big rainforest up here as well, bleeding over from San Jose, La Amistad, I believe it's called. And it's in this area we can find the highest point in Panama, it is Volcan Baru. It is a volcano, but it hasn't erupted in a couple hundred years. My cat, of course, is now eating, so ignore him. Let's see, what else do I need to mention? There are lots and lots of rivers all throughout Panama. These mountains make a continental divide 
meaning that the rivers on this side flow to the Caribbean, the rivers on this side flow to the Pacific. And I'm just looking over my notes. I think that's all that I really wanted to mention in terms of geography. Really fascinating country. But let's get into its history. You can find out how this canal happened. It's pretty interesting. So, Panama, as you can see, is an isthmus. What exactly is an isthmus? It is a type of land shape that connects one large landmass and another large landmass with a very narrow landmass. And Panama is indeed very, very narrow. So Central America and South America were formed long before the isthmus was. Once this officially rose up, and became land, it created an interesting mix of the flora and fauna that merged onto this land. And there's a lot of endemic plants and animals here in Panama that you can't find anywhere else just because, um, you know, plants grew over here and over here. Animals came from here, animals came from here and mixed in this area. And of course, it was important for human expansion because people could travel down to South America. There are many, many indigenous peoples in this area, in this area. Um, I'm not going to go through them all now, but just know that there are, of course, a lot. And they would have encountered Rodrigo de Bastidas in 1501, when he came sailing up from South America to explore this land. In 1502, Christopher Columbus actually came by and started to settle this area. But it wasn't until 1513 when one of de Bastidas' men, Vasco Nunez de Balboa, was over here, probably in Portobello, and asked the locals to you know, help him explore. And they were like, check this out. And they had him climb a big mountain and he looked and saw the Pacific Ocean, which no European had seen the Pacific from that angle before. So he was the first, and as you can see, Balboa was like a very important figure in Panamanian history. So Panama suddenly became very important to the Spanish because they had lots of colonies down in South America where they were mining lots and lots of silver and gold in Peru and Bolivia, all those areas down there. So they figured a very quick way would be to take their riches, bring it up here, dock their ship, carry it across the land to another ship, and then sail off to Spain. In 1514, a man named Pedro Arias Davila came. He's known as Pedro Arias. He moved over here, established Panama City, which apparently the name Panama is a native word in this area for plenty of fish, and set up a city to create the Camino Real, the Royal Road so that the Spanish could carry their riches across the isthmus. This set up Panama to be a target for pirate attacks. Um, Portobello was attacked by Sir Francis Drake in 1572 to 73, and more famously in 1671, Henry Morgan attacked Panama City. Yes, it's Captain Morgan, like the alcohol. Uh, he attacked Panama City and burned it to the ground. There are very, very few buildings left from um, Panama Viejo, which is the old Panama, right? But it had to be completely rebuilt. So independence started brewing in the late 1810s. So Spain was kind of going through it. So a lot of Spanish territories in Central and South America were like, now is our opportunity to go for independence, and Panama was one of them. They declared independence from Spain in 1821, and they joined Gran Colombia. So down here in South America, Simon Bolivar was fighting for freedom all across South America, and he created a huge country called Gran Colombia, which was Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, parts of Brazil, and then Panama. But that collapsed. There's just way too much going on in all of that land. So it just became Colombia and Panama was just 
Colombia for the longest. And a lot was going on in Colombian politics and all of that, lots of conflict, things like that. So Panama was none too pleased to be part of Colombia, kind of regretted joining. They tried a seat in 1831 and failed. They fought a war with Colombia from 1899 to 1902 called the Thousand Days War. Couldn't get free of Colombia. But meanwhile, a lot of European powers were very interested in Panama and they wanted to make a canal. There was already a railroad being built across here to transport across the isthmus, but the canal would be ideal, right? So in 1881, the French agreed with Panama and Colombia to build the canal and the guy that was going to do it, it was the guy who made the Suez Canal actually, he was hired to make the canal, just wanted to just plow the land and just part the mountains and create a canal. But, um, you know, the, the land in Egypt is very different from the land in Panama. It's not mountainous jungle over there. So I don't think he was really anticipating it. Plus, um, if you see over here, this is the Mosquito Gulf. Lots and lots of mosquitoes in this area, carrying yellow fever. Uh, killed many, many workers, not just from the dangerous conditions of the construction, but the disease wiped out a lot, lot, lot of workers. So the canal did not even get close to being halfway finished when they gave up in 1899 and just abandoned the project. But the United States was interested in building the canal. So they said, hey, Colombia, if we take over the canal project and build the canal, um, could we, like, control it and all that? And Colombia was just like, nope, no canal. You do not have the rights to it. So very cleverly, they went to Panama and were like, we know you don't even want to be part of Colombia. How about we help you get independence? in exchange for building this canal. And they said deal. And Panama gained its independence from Colombia in 1903. The United States started to build the canal in 1904, completed it technically in 1914. The first ship didn't go through till 1915, but that was like a test ship. And it wasn't really used like commercially until the end of the 1910s. But the canal was built. They developed the lock system and created Lake Gatun and everything that the canal is today. The Americans had official control of the canal. They also were allowed to get a say in Panamanian politics. And they created a zone around the canal known as the Canal Zone, which was technically American property. And it was just for the Americans working at the canal to live in. No Panamanians allowed even to, like, set foot in the canal zone. And apparently, life in the canal zone was very similar to, like, life in suburban America. They had all the luxuries that every American had. Meanwhile, people throughout Panama were kind of living in poverty, you know? They weren't really benefiting from the canal. They were slightly, but not nearly as much as the Americans were. When World War II rolled around, the United States zoomed down here to protect the canal. They occupied lots of military bases and towns to make sure that no enemies got this canal, which the enemies did not get the canal. And after the war, they lingered and wanted to stay longer. But the Panamanians said, no, we don't want you. You know, we already don't really want you in the canal zone. We don't want you outside the canal zone either. There were many riots, the the most infamous being in 1964, known as the Day of Martyrs, because um, not only were protesters shot at, but innocent people who were nearby were also killed during that protest. Very sad day. Uh, but eventually, let's see, oh, and then also 1964 was when a um, complicated rule where Ugh, I don't want to get into it, about the flags, how the, okay, so they wanted the flag of Panama to be flown in the canal zone. The Americans didn't want it, so they, like, passed a law saying that you have to, so a lot of Americans in the canal zone just took down their flags so they wouldn't have to fly the 
Panama flag next to the U.S. flag. So students stormed the canal zone with Panama flags in protest. It was a mess. There was a riot and everything. So anyway, all of that was happening in 1968. Sorry, 1968, there was a coup of the government led by Omar Torrijos. Um, he set up a, like a plan to be a dictator, but it was very loose. It was kind of like a, a loose form of communism he was setting up. And he settled the arguments with the U.S. and the Panamanians. He sat down with the U.S. and agreed to change the treaty they had signed way back in 1903. So, in 1977, the U.S. agreed to give the canal to Panama on December 31st, 1999. I guess so they could have time to rearrange things and move Americans out of Panama, but it was agreed to. Torrijos mysteriously died in a plane crash. It's pretty weird how so many um, pro-communist rulers die in plane crashes in the 70s and 80s. It is a mystery. Just putting that out there. This was in 1981. A man named Manuel Antonio Noriega took over the government, and he was much more authoritative. He was much more dictatorial, and he committed so many crimes. Like, it was like he couldn't commit crimes fast enough. He was accused of money laundering, drug smuggling, like a lot of drug smuggling, like out of Colombia into the U.S. He helped the Contra rebels over in Nicaragua. He gave them weapons and money and um, just a lot. He um, allowed a lot of violence against protesters, protesting against him. He was just kind of a, a no good guy. So the U.S. invaded Panama in 1989 to remove him from power, which they did. He had been tried in absentia in Miami, Florida and in France for his crimes. So he went where he went. He was extradited to Florida, where he was, you know, declared guilty and served time there. Uh, once his time was reduced for good behavior, apparently. So France was like, you know, we found him guilty too. We want him to serve time. So he went to France to serve the rest of his sentence. Panama was like, you know, he committed like way more crimes in Panama. So he served out um, even more time in jail in Panama, later on house arrest because he was ill, where he would pass away. And then, did lots of time. So after the dust settled after Noriega, Panama really picked itself up. Economically, Panama's been booming, especially after 1999 when they got control of the canal. And all of the toll fees went to Panama, and they put it back into the economy. Panama City is a huge, bustling city. Tons of skyscrapers. Absolutely gorgeous city. There is still a lot of poverty, what have you, throughout Panama. But Panama economically has been doing incredibly well. And it's really all because of the canal. And they even expanded it in 2016. They, I think they deepened it and widened it a little so that uh, bigger ships could sail through. That's essentially where Panama is today. Let me flip through this book and I'll show you some cool pictures of Panama. It's a very interesting place. This is on the San Blas Islands. Some really cool boats. We have a canal. I believe, right? It must be. Oh yeah, look at it. You can see just up there. Looks like one of the locks up there. Here is a political map of Panama. And this is Ferdinand de Lesep, who tried to build the canal for French and failed. We have a big lock over here. The ship's getting raised, looks like raised down maybe. So the ship's coming and it's going to lower the ship down to the, oh, you can't even see. It's going to lower the ship down to here. This is in 1903, supporting independence, and there's Christopher Columbus there. You still can't see. There you go. There's Christopher Columbus up there. Um, lots of workers building the canal, digging, digging, digging. And this is 
a tugboat going through on 1914, the first ship through the canal. There's a really good map of the canal and the canal zone from 1903. You can see all the different locks there, the paths they go through, and the railroad is the black line going across there. Let's see, there's Teddy Roosevelt sitting in a big construction crane thing, helping to build the canal. This is a 1964 protest in the canal zone. And this is kind of what Panama City looks like today. Very hustle bustle big city. Let's see, there goes a river. And a little indigenous looking area there. Let's see, big mountains. So pretty. Let's see what this is. This is a fossil of some kind of a camel, it says, from 17 million years ago. A tiny camel, ancestor of a llama. A physical map, you can just see how mountainous this country is. And, um, I think this is the... does it say what this is? I think this is the lake. I'm not sure, it does, there's no caption there, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. This is Vulcan Baru, the highest point in Panama. Gorgeous picture of the rainforest here. And this is Gutton Lake. See a ship going through. This is on Coiba, the biggest island in Panama. And in the, I almost said the Caribbean, it's in the Pacific, in Central America. Got some cities here. This is Colon. And this is Santiago de Veraguas. It's raining, but they're moving their bananas. And, oh dear. So this is from the drought. The water going down in the canal, exposing this land that had been covered up when the dam was built. There's a very sweet sloth here. I think there might be snakes and spiders in this chapter on peak. Not on this page. The National Flowers, the Holy Ghost Orchid, it's really pretty. And there's a big, big, big tree covered in like lichen or something like that. Not sure. Getting some mahogany. Oh, that's right, I'm trying to check for scary animals, but I don't see any. There's a gorgeous jaguar staring straight into your soul. And this big, goofy, giant ant ear. There's such strange animals. They're so cool. Let me see. There's a bat, though. And some people are upset by bats, but look at... Here it comes. A sweet little bat. This, um, it says here there's an island on Gatun Lake that's home to 74 different bat species. Isn't that bad? It's so many bats. And, okay, bat's gone. This gorgeous hummingbird. This is a rufous-crested coquette. And, oh, we're good. Okay, maybe there are no creepy crawlies. I don't think so. Maybe it's another book I'm thinking of. A harpy eagle, the national bird. Here goes a frigate bird. Some huge water birds with this big pouch they inflate to attract mates. And here are some turtles hatching and crawling out of the sand into the ocean. A big old sweet green iguana. And a beautiful waterfall. This is in La Amistad. gigantic tree there, my goodness. And underwater, you've got fishies and coral and all those wonderful things. Yeah, I must have been thinking of a different... I checked out two books on Panama. Maybe it's something of a Panama book. Anyway, some very old artifacts. This is from the Chiriqui region. It's really cool. There's Rodrigo de Bastidas, the first European to arrive in Panama. Some Spanish exploration maps here. You can see brown is Balboa, uh, orange is Bastidas, uh, green is Columbus. He went all over the place. And here is Balboa seeing the Pacific Ocean. This is Uraca, Uraca, a here we go. 
an indigenous person who fought against the Spanish. He's commemorated on one of the coins in Panama. This is pirates. It's Henry Morgan attacking a ship. Here's a map of Gran Colombia. See just how big it was. Oh, parts of Peru. Okay, I should mention that. We've got, let's see. Oh, so these are people going to the gold rush in California. Something that really precipitated the building of the canal because um, you either had to cross the continental United States, which was very treacherous, or sail around South America and up to California, which was also very treacherous. So it just gave more and more need for a canal to be built. Here's the railroad going through. Let's see. Oh dear. I'm just reading this. It says Cologne burned to the ground in 1855. I didn't know that. But look at the, they better move out the way. The train is coming right over to them. That he's like horse move now. <laughs> Alright. An excavator. That's what the big machine is called. To create the canal. This is from the Thousand Days War. And let's see. Oh, this is from the Spanish American War. I guess another reason that America would be invested in Panama, taking away a Spanish property. This is George Washington Gotols, I believe his name is pronounced who um, a, a bunch of people were in charge and resigned and all that. He was the one that finalized all of that. There is a big gun here. Oh, this is for World War II. To try to keep the canal safe. We've got a uh, riot in the canal zone, 1964. Here's a bowling alley in the canal zone. People just lived regular, ordinary, suburban American lives. And there's Jimmy Carter with Omar Torrijos agreeing to hand over the canal. This is during the 1989 invasion. It was very violent. Many people lost their lives, but you know, mission accomplished at the end of the day. This is Mireya Moscoso. Moscoso, sorry, Mireya Moscoso. She was president when the canal went back to Panama. Let's see. This is. A president here, um, Ricardo Martinelli. Pretty sure he's not president anymore. This book is from like four years ago, I want to say. There's a parade happening here. Oh, I should say, um, does it say Independence from Spain Day? It's November 28th. I meant to say that. And then First Cry for Independence Day was November 10th. I didn't get all into all that in my notes. Anyway, the National Assembly is here. We've got Panama City, big skyscrapers, and gorgeous old buildings, and here's a map. You can see just how modern it is, all very grid and organized. This is the Supreme Court building. There's Noriega. Here is a house in the Darien region, elevated. Here are the provinces and the indigenous districts, I should say. The Comarcas, this is Gobe Bucle. There's Cunillada, where the Cuna people live. And Villalo is where the Imbera Unan people live. Here's the flag of Panama. Let's read about it. The Panamanian flag was first used in 1904 and was officially adopted in 1925 was designed by the family of Manuel Amador Guerrero, the first president of Panama. The flag consists of four rectangles, two white, one red, and one blue. One of the white rectangles contains a blue star, and the other contains a red star. The white of the flag represents peace, the blue stands for purity and honesty, and the red for authority and law of the country. There's an Berra leader, it says. The pencil's about to fall off. There we go. There's a big parade here. My goodness, it's huge. Brass bands and everything. This guy's got some lettuce. 
lots and lots of lettuce. And this guy's got a lot of bananas. And this guy's roasting some coffee beans. There's a resources map. You can see just how much is forest. And you can see there's some mining, some fishing, pearls, and agriculture. And there's a gold mine there in Colon. Let's see. Moving. Oh, see, look, there's a cruise ship going through the Panama Canal. They're checking it out. Once in a lifetime opportunity, right? This is the Bridge of the Americas. I think I meant to mention that in geography. Very, very famous bridge over the Panama Canal in Panama City. This is them expanding the canal. Oh, there you go. <laughs> expanding the canal so that bigger ships can get through. And the eco tourists are here in the rainforest looking for birds. And let's see see what this is. A dam being made for hydroelectricity. And Panama has these um, centismo they're called? Oh no, they're called it, it's, it is a centismo, but the coins are called baboas. You can see there he is. But they use American dollar bills. Chilling out on some hammocks there. Population map. It's very, very densely populated all around here. Not so much over here. Let's see. It's a Lunar New Year celebration. There are quite a few Chinese people in Panama. Another thing I didn't mention in its history. One of the weird things that Moringa did was um, help smuggle Chinese people into the country. Like by the thousands, but anyway. An indigenous village in the 1500s. And here's a Guna woman. Some Gobe boy with his slingshot. And this is the Comarca flag of Gobe Bugle. They're protesting changes to mining laws, it says. Some incredible woven baskets here by the Embero people. And these are Nassau men. They are out fishing in their canoe there. And it's a dead end. So this must be Easter or something. It's a little religious parade. This is the religion chapter. Gorgeous church here. The Church of San Pedro, built in 1550. Carnival. Of course, you have to dress all out. Here's a Baha'i temple, and these are Embero and oh, the Embero and Wunan use this really interesting like face paint and skin paint on their skin. Really cool. It says it lasts one to two weeks. Playing a little pan flute there, and playing some very fun music. I think by the way she's dancing. This is Ruben Blades like by far the most famous musician from Panama. They're wearing their polleras, the traditional dress of Panamanian women. So gorgeous. This is Rod Kiru playing in Major League Baseball. There's a jockey. This is Lafitte Pinque Jr. And he won the Kentucky Derby. Oh, that's so cool. They're, they got their surfboard and their horse, and they're heading out to the beach in Boca del Toro. Lloyd La Beach, the first Panamanian to win an Olympic medal, and it was gold. Oh, what's happening here? I think they're all saying hello. <laughs> There's some sweet faces over there. Let's see, this is a university in Panama. Oh, they're all dolled up for holiday, probably carnival. He's got some fish there in the fish market. And enjoying some coffee, the cafe. Some sancocho, a really yummy looking chicken soup. And typical road in Panama, apparently. A red devil bus. Like a the traditional old school buses of Panama City. Here's a 
to the woman talking on the phone. And that's it. I thought there would be a picture of the um, mole. It's been in another book. The Kuna make these really gorgeous um, fabrics called, I believe it's called mole. Um, but anyway, there weren't any pictures in there. I'm sure there's some in the book I'm going to show you tomorrow. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, good, good night. Good night. Good night.